What's up guys, my name is Bart Komar, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how we converted this closet into a office slash studio, or what some people are calling these days, a cloffice. So we can actually get some privacy while we're working during the pandemic, and not have kids asking us questions every five minutes because we're sitting in the living room. And then I'm gonna break out what it actually cost me to do this so you guys have a better idea on whether or not you wanna tackle something like this. So let me show you guys exactly how I did it, and welcome to the Komar Project. All right guys, so this is our basement closet and I used it to store all my military gear and also as a makeshift recording studio. And since we spend so much time working from home these days, it was time to create a designated space to work out of. And the first order of business was to get everything out of here. Now that all the clutter is gone, it's time to remove all the wire shelving and you want to be careful when removing them because if you just yank on them, you're going to put a big hole in your wall. The best way I found is to take a screwdriver and flip all those clips up. Then the shelf should just come right out. Next you want to pull the nail from the wall clip using a pair of pliers and then pull the expandable clip out of the wall. I mentioned that I hate wire shelving. Whoever invented these things should egg his house. <laughs> All right, now that we got a fresh slate in this room, let's go build the top. Let's do it. Since I have a bunch of ash lumber from a bulk buy this summer, I'm going to be making an L-shaped desktop so that we have plenty of space to work on. And the first thing I need to do is cut it down to size on the miter saw so it's easier to manage and carry around the shop. Looks like we're going to need to put a bow tie in here so that doesn't happen in real life. Recently I've been asked quite a lot on what kind of tool I should buy first if I'm just getting started in making things and my answer is always going to be a track saw. It's so versatile that you can pretty much make any cut safely and once you have that you can then move on to a miter saw and even a table saw. Next I need to glue the two boards together to make the L shape and miters can be a little bit tricky to clamp up. So I cut a couple of scrap triangle pieces and super glued them to the board temporarily. And to help with alignment I cut a few dominoes but dowels or biscuits will work just as well. So this thing has been in the clamps for 24 hours, the glue has cured, and we're ready to address the checks and the knots and all the little imperfections that may cause issues down the road. And last night I cut a bunch of bow ties, which I'm not a fan of. I mean, they have their place, but I was looking for a different way to stabilize this top. And my friend Chris over at Cow Dog Craftworks mentioned that I could just use regular splines. So that's what we're gonna do, and it's very easy. Let me show you guys how. Splines are basically straight pieces of wood with straight grain that act like a splint for all the cracks in your board. And the glue is plenty strong to hold it over time. To cut the mortises for the splines, I first made a quick jug using some MDF and CA glue to help me get straight lines with a router. And with a pattern bit, I cut each line about half of an inch deep.
flush the splines down with a handsaw, a little bit of plane work, and I did do a bit of sanding, but just enough to knock all the rough spots out. I didn't want the top to lose that rough sawn look that I absolutely love. It's time. With a simple top like this, it was only fitting to use Simple Finish by Maker Branco. And honestly, I love this stuff. I've been using it pretty much on everything in the shop and quite a bit of furniture lately. You wipe it on, 15 minutes later you wipe it off, it can't get any easier. It's like having magic in a can. <laughs> oh. So a typical desk is about 29 to 30 inches. And I got a couple holes here that I really want to cover but they're at 32 inches. I might be a rebel. So on the edge, I'm gonna have a wood support that's gonna support it all the way through. But through the rest of the top, I'm gonna have these angles, these steel angle brackets that are gonna support it. So it's, I have 12 inches coming out and eight inches going down. It's gonna support it really well, so that way there's no sack going down. Let's mount these back up. All right, so got a bit of an issue. The walls, obviously not perfect 90 in. I made this at a perfect 90. I probably should have checked the angle here, but no big deal. What I'm gonna end up doing is scribing this entire side to the wall. I'm gonna end up cutting off that angle, and then once I put it back in, it's gonna fit perfect to the angle where the wall is. Or did you fart? Oh, dude. Oh, man, that's so stinky. Did you fart? It smells really bad. Like, really bad. All right, guys, it's time to put in the acoustic panels. And I used to use these octagon panels off of Amazon, but unfortunately, they don't sell them anymore. And I love them, they look cool, and they work great in the old room. So now, we got two different options. This is a nine square 12 by 12 panel. It actually folds and it has these ridges and I'm guessing that's actually gonna help to trap the sound in there a little bit. Um, so we'll see. The other option is these triangle acoustics. These are also 12 by 12. So I think we're gonna try these on one wall and then on the wall where I'm gonna be recording most of the time, we're gonna go with the nine square. Nine square. And to mount these things, I've tried a different couple of options. Double-sided tape, doesn't work. Super glue on a roll. This stuff is magic. Literally, super glue on a roll. So I'm gonna put a link in the description of this and get yourself some super glue on a roll. All right guys, so that is it. The closet renovation is finished. And I wouldn't even call it a renovation, but more of a makeover. So let's break out the cost and see what it actually costs. First, let's start off with this countertop. And I can't really put a price on it because I bought it in bulk and it's been sitting out front for a long time. But if you were to buy it at a lumber yard or even on like Facebook Marketplace, you could probably buy it for a hundred bucks for a large area like this, but you can always use whatever it is you have sitting around in your home. Um, if you have a desktop or you can even use plywood. All right, next are the acoustic panels that allow me to do what I do. And I ended up paying 60 bucks for all of them. I bought a couple of different types and I'll link those down in the description below along with everything that I used in this video. And then finally, all the decorations and little knickknacks that we have. Um, so the lamp cost me 65 bucks. The circle is probably the most expensive at 100 bucks. 
but you can always use things that are laying around your house to decorate it and make it feel like it's your space. So for about 300, 350 bucks, we're able to transform this place into a work area where we actually want to come down and work in. And at the end of the day, that's what pays the bills, right? So if you guys got anything out of this video, please let me know in the comments section below. I love hearing from you guys. And if you're new to the channel and you haven't done so yet, go hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss upcoming builds. <laughs> and if you guys want to see what's going on in the shop on a daily basis, check me out on Instagram. Very active there. Post daily tips, tricks, and just fun projects. So thank you so much for joining me on this experience. I will see you guys next time. Deal or no deal? Class studio or office closet. Closet. Clothis. 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 Whoa! I love you. Mwah! <laughs> <laughs>